Welcome to this session with the CAD Guild. We are going to talk about an important message processing system known as Apache Kafka. In this session, we will get introduced to Apache Kafka, talk about what has brought us to Apache Kafka, discuss the architecture, and explore some hands-on. So let's get started. What is log data? The first thing that we would be discussing is the log data. What do we mean by log data? Log data can be any data which is related to the user activity or the events like likes, sharing, comments. Log data can also be any data which includes the operational metrics like service call stack, call latency, errors, the behavior of CPU, memory, networks, etc. These log data may seem very primitive and trivial, but can be extremely useful when considered for analysis. Why analyze log data? If you are able to understand and process the log data carefully, you will be able to generate search relevance. You will also be able to generate recommendations for different user segments, which will help you implement targeted advertisement. And this will also help you in security applications or for a customized news feed. The challenge with the analysis is primarily the volume, as the volume of the data is generally in the level of terabytes. Every day, China Mobile, or Facebook, gathers more than 5 terabytes of data. It can be extremely challenging to process this large amount of data from different sources to different consumers. Let us take an example. If you want to have a metrics server which keeps you updated about the different metrics collected from the front-end applications, then you can make a direct connection to every front-end server and get the result, which is not a problem for a small use case. However, as the size of the system increases, you will realize that it can be extremely messy and difficult to debug. Suppose you have got lots of data producers and lots of data consumers application and making the direct connection is never a choice you would like to go for, as making a change at one place will have to be updated at every other place. It can become extremely difficult to lineage the failure and track how the data has become corrupt or from where the failure is getting received. It can be very clean to use a server between the data producer and the data consumer. That server will act as a central repository for the data and every producer will write there while every consumer will read from there. That's how a publish subscribe messaging system works. It makes the design look very clean and very efficient, but the efficiency of this design directly depends on the design of your publish subscribe messaging system. This publish subscribe messaging system has got different types available. One example is Apache Kafka, which is a layer between the producers and the consumers. We'll talk more about this. Kafka versus traditional system. First of all, let's take a look at Kafka versus the traditional system. There have been traditional system implementation in different languages. The problem with the traditional system is that they are not optimized for diverse use cases. We want a messaging system which should have a flexibility between throughput and reliability. Throughput means how many messages are you able to consume or produce per unit time while reliability means the data which you have consumed or the data which you have produced and is guaranteed to be available in the next steps. Many systems depend on the reliability and do not care much about throughput. There is a requirement of a design which is a balance between throughput and reliability, or better say, the user or the developer should have the power to increase either of them, throughput or reliability. Another thing is, with the increase in the volume of data, the existing solutions have very limited distributed support. They would like to have an operation on a single machine rather than going into a cluster of machines. These are some important functionalities for which Apache Kafka is a good fit. How and why, we will find out. An important fact about Apache Kafka is that Apache Kafka works on a cluster of commodity hardware where every machine stores some data in form of topics. A topic is something like a table of RDBMS and a topic is distributed across multiple machines with the help of partitions. So we have got partitions which are a subset of the actual topic and every producer will write to a topic while every consumer will read from a topic. There are also concepts of brokers, consumer groups, 
and a append only write, which we will be discussing later. Kafka versus log aggregators. There have been certain log aggregators like Scribe, Flume, and Highway, but they were designed to load data into Hadoop for consumption, whereas Apache Kafka gives you or the consumer the full luxury to use the data either on the batch processing or in real-time processing. So it is up to the consumer on how they want to operate it. They may want to run processes daily or may want to run processes after every minute. It completely depends on the consumer. So it makes sense to talk about a few more concepts of Apache Kafka. Kafka, first step. Firstly, Kafka is a publish subscribe messaging system, which is distributed. Kafka, topics and partitions. Here are some of the concepts of Kafka, like every message is retained in a topic and a topic is divided into partitions. The partitions are on different machines and each partition is a single log. Any message which is written to a partition is assigned an offset. The offset is unique for a partition. It specifies the position of a message. A message can have key, it can have value, the key can be null. If you have the key, the producer can make a choice to which partition a message should be sent, else Kafka will make a choice internally. You may replicate the partitions for redundancy, just to increase the availability, so that if one partition fails, you can recover the partition from a different machine. This is how the design looks like. In this example, we have got a topic with a topic name having four partitions. Every partition has got a certain number of messages. Messages are always appended to the partition, so the writing of messages is extremely fast. No matter what the size of the partition is, you're going to simply append a new message to a partition. So it takes a constant amount of time and it is very quick. Kafka Consumer Group Now there's a concept of the consumer group. A consumer group is a combination of consumers. One consumer group will consume only one topic. That is, if one consumer group consumes one topic known as topic name, then there could be multiple consumers inside the consumer group who will read different partition. This increases the processing of or reading of messages as one consumer is not reading all the partitions. One consumer is reading only a subset of total partitions. If you want a single consumer to read all the partitions, create a consumer group with only one consumer. A consumer group can read multiple partitions or better to say, one consumer group can read multiple topics and one topic could be read by multiple consumer groups. Just imagine you are having got one topic of data. Hadoop can read that topic and any stream processing or real-time processing framework like Kafka Streams or Storm of Spark Streaming or Stanza can also read it. So the same data is available to multiple consumers and it's all on the consumers how they want to consume the data. This makes Kafka very robust in design and interesting in its use cases. Hands-on. Now we will talk about some hands-on activity. The first thing that we must do to download Kafka is go to confluent.io and click on download. Next, you can choose what you want to download. You can download either the open source or the enterprise. You just have to fill up a form and download it. I am using a CAD Guild Sandbox and Mobax term to connect to a CAD Guild Sandbox from my desktop. After downloading Apache Kafka, suppose I have placed it at this location in my sandbox. Then this is the Apache Kafka that we have downloaded. If you go to the Kafka directory, you will find that there's a directory known as bin and then there are multiple directories. However, that is not something to be bothered about now. I'm going to launch a few more terminals. It will be required since we will be running different services. Now let us get inside this particular directory.
where I have launched four terminals. You will come to know why this has been done. The very first thing you must do is start the Zookeeper and Kafka server. But what are these two? Zookeeper is a distributed coordination entity which maintains which consumer has read to what offset. It contains the metadata of a topic, like what are the partition of a topic and other details, like which is the leader, which is the follower present here. The Kafka server must be running, and this is also known as Kafka brokers. So in a Kafka cluster, there could be different Kafka brokers. In our machine, we will be using a single Kafka broker, but in practice, there could be multiple Kafka brokers who actually store the data, get the data from producers, and service the data to the consumers. So, in one terminal, we are going to launch the Zookeeper service, and the Zookeeper server will start here. On receiving any error, we must stop all the services which are running on our machine. On receiving something like that, you would need to check if your HBase is running. You might want to stop HBase as well in case you receive any such error message. Let's check if the process is running now. We see that HMaster is running. Let us kill this process. You have HMaster still running, which we need to delete. However, we let it run once your zookeeper has started. You have to start Kafka server. Zookeeper will run in its own terminal, while the Kafka server will continue to run in its own terminal. Let's run them. Once your zookeeper and Kafka servers are up and running, what we are going to do next is create the Kafka topics. The topic name can be Kafka Test Topic. This is a Zookeeper location at 2181 port. It will have only one partition and one replication factor. It's a simple topic we are creating. Let's create it at a separate terminal. You will get a message that this topic has been created. Now there are two producers or basically two console activities available. One of which is a console producer and the other one is the console consumer. If you type this command, Kafka console produces a specified list, Kafka brokers, which are basically the Kafka server and the topic. Now, if we launch this as a producer command, whatever you type here, it will be consumed by the consumer to connect Kafka test topic. Kafka test topic is a topic on which I can write something like, this is line one. Similarly, I can write, this is line two. This is line three. And this is line four. So I have published four messages to this particular Kafka topic, which I want to consume. This can be used as console consumer so that you can use console consumer. Give the name of the topic and specify whether you want to read from the beginning. Give the location of the zookeeper and you will be able to consume the messages which you have already printed. If you paste it, you will be able to see that the consumers start and all the four lines will get displayed here. Any line which was published from here like this is line five will be consumed by the consumer. It will be available on the other terminal just like it is available here now. If you type this is line six, then on the other terminal, it will automatically be reflected 
as there is a producer producing data to Kafka test topic and there is a consumer getting data from the Kafka test topic. This was all about the basic hands-on for Apache Kafka. We learned about the requirement of Apache Kafka. Also, we got to know about the architecture and gain some basic understanding of hands-on in Apache Kafka. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to ACAD Guild videos for further updates on the other components of Hadoop ecosystem.